One big goal for a lot of guitarists, especially in the beginner or intermediate range, is achieving fretboard freedom or the ability to improvise or play wherever you want all over the guitar fretboard. Now this is not something that most people are going to be able to achieve overnight. With the right practice and direction, and if you implement what I'm showing you in this video, you will be able to achieve fretboard freedom. Depending on how much time and effort you put into this, you can actually get all of this down rather quickly. But don't get discouraged if it takes you a little bit of time. Everybody learns things at a different rate. What we're going to be doing is learning the five shapes of the pentatonic scale. If you already know all five shapes, you can skip ahead a little later in the video and I'll show you how you can use them for playing all over the fretboard. Essentially what you can do with the five shapes of the pentatonic scale is unlock a roadmap for your guitar. All five shapes fit within 12 frets. Once you learn all five shapes here, all you have to do is take the five shapes and move them over here and you know how to play on this section of the guitar as well. If we had a guitar with a thousand frets, the same five shapes would continuously repeat. For simplicity's sake, we're gonna learn these shapes in the key of A minor. Once you have them down, you can shift them all around to whatever key you need to play in for whatever song you wanna do. The first shape, and some of you may already know this one, we're gonna start it on fret five here. Each of these shapes is gonna be two notes per string. Ideally, when you practice them, you wanna do one downstroke and one upstroke per string. Starting through this one, we're going to go two notes on each string. We're going to go 5, 8 on the E string, 5, 7 on the A string, 5, 7 on the D string, 5, 7 on G, 5, 8 on B, and 5, 8 on E. It's very important when you're practicing these, especially if you're newer to the guitar, make sure you're using all the fingers that you have available to you in the most ergonomic way. For this one, when you're playing on the five, use your index finger. For the eights, use your pinky. And for the sevens, use your ring finger. Before learning all the other shapes, you really wanna make sure you have down each one memorized and you're able to play up and down. So practice it running up and down smoothly like this. <laughs> Definitely want to make sure you're comfortable with that. Practice it in different spots on the guitar. With this shape, depending on which note you start on is going to determine what minor key you're playing in. A is a good spot, kind of middle range of the fretboard, good spot to learn it. If you play over on F, it's going to be a little harder because we have a bit of a wider stretch there. Practice that shape all over the fretboard so you get used to the different feel of the frets. Playing all the way up here, your fingers are gonna be much closer together. Once you have that shape fully committed to memory, you're gonna to wanna to start on shape two. For shape two, we're gonna start on fret eight. When learning the shapes, you wanna understand how they're connecting to each other, not just how to play each shape. Every shape connecting to the previous one is going to start on the second finger that you play on each string. So because we're ending on the eighth fret of shape one, that's where we're gonna start shape two. Shape two is gonna start on the E string. We're gonna go eight, 10, seven, 10, seven, 10, seven, nine, eight, 10, eight, 10. If you're paying close attention here, you can see that the notes we're playing in this range here are the same ones in the second half of shape one. Every shape you learn is gonna be half of the previous shape with another half added on to it. You're gonna to wanna to practice shape two in the same way, but we're gonna start getting a little more advanced here. After you're comfortable playing shape two up and down in a variety of different places, you're going to wanna to start combining the two shapes. First thing I recommend doing is playing, starting on the E string all the way down to the high E string. Then you're gonna slide over on shape one. Then you're gonna slide over to shape two and play up towards the low E string. That will look like this. It's a good idea to practice that starting in different spots and moving around in different ways. You could start on shape two and go down and then back up shape one, all kinds of different ways to work on it to really make sure you have those shapes committed to memory. Once you're comfortable playing them, up and down like that, you wanna get used to moving in between the shapes in different spots. For example, if we're playing on shape one, say we get to there, seventh fret on the D string, then you can move over to shape two. 
Now I'm in shape two on the 10th fret. So you want to get used to moving in between the shapes in different spots and really having them committed to memory so you can visualize them on the fretboard and be able to move through them freely when you need to. The next step is going to be learning shape three because shape two in A minor, we ended on the 10th fret. That's where we're going to start for shape three. We're going to go 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 9, 12, 10, 13, and 10, 12. To make this one a little easier, what I like to do when going down is use 9, 12 with the index pinky. And then when we go to 10, 13 on the B string, also use index pinky. The rest of them are just going to be index ring. You don't want to always get locked into using the same fingers though. And when improvising, you're going to end up using different fingers in different situations. Once you have shape three fully committed to memory, you're going to want to do what we were doing before, moving down and up and then down on shape three, adding that one into the mix and then working on using it to move between at different spots. After shape three, of course, we're going up to shape four because shape three ended on fret 12. We're gonna start shape four on fret 12. For shape four, we're gonna do 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 13, 15, and 12, 15. Same thing as before, get used to adding that into the mix of shapes that you have and make sure that one's fully committed to memory before we add Shape five. Shape five is gonna start all the way up on the 15th fret. We're gonna go 15, 17, 15, 17, 14, 17, 14, 17, 15, 17, 15, 17. Then if you remember how we talked about how all the shapes are gonna repeat again, once you get past shape five, it circles back around to shape one. So if we put shape one all the way up here, on fret 17, we're gonna go 17, 20, 17, 19, 17, 19, 17, 19, 17, 20, 17, 20. You can also, if we wanna go this way on the fretboard, we know our shape one by now, shape one is on the fifth fret here. We wanna go that way on the fretboard, we can put shape five right here on three, five, three, five, two, five, two, five, three, five, three, five. So you're gonna wanna get used to moving from shape one down to shape five as well. Depending on which key you're playing in, you're gonna have more room in different directions for using different shapes. Great way to practice all five shapes once you have them somewhat memorized, but you're not super comfortable moving through them all is doing what we were doing before, where we go down and then up on each shape, and then we'll be able to move through all five shapes. That will look like this. great thing to do is use a metronome while you're playing this so you practice sticking with the rhythm at the same time that you're practicing learning your shapes. Once you're feeling comfortable playing through all the shapes like that, make sure you move it around, start it in different spots, start shape one on third fret, then you'll be playing in G minor, start it in seventh fret, you'll be playing in B minor. If you want a more in-depth guide on how to use these shapes, check out my video in the description on how to use these pentatonic shapes to play in any key, including how to change them into playing in major keys. To play in major keys, you can still use the same five shapes. Once you're feeling comfortable with these shapes, or even if you just have a couple of them down, it's a great idea to pull up a backing track in whatever key you want to learn in or that you're practicing and practice improvising over it. For example, you could search right here on YouTube, A minor backing track. Any of these notes that we've played in the five shapes starting on A, you can practice over an A minor backing track. What you wanna do is try to catch the beat, start bobbing your head along with it, start tapping your foot, make sure you're locked into the rhythm of whatever backing track you're playing in, and start playing some notes 
along with that rhythm. Here, I'll play a slow example of what you can expect to practice while you're working on your pentatonic shapes. You can do something like this to move through the different shapes. practice moving through those shapes, understand how they connect together, and before you know it, you're gonna have fretboard freedom and you're gonna be able to play all over your fretboard in any key. If you guys have any questions about this, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'll try to get to everybody. I hope this helps you out. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and a subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great one.